welcome back and in this video i will explain and demonstrate different techniques that hackers use to bypass admin restrictions on windows and how to prevent them just a quick disclaimer that this video is for educational purposes only and you should not be doing the techniques in this video or testing them on any computer that either isn't yours or on any computer that you don't have permission to test on this video is meant for system administrators and parents so they can prevent their security measures from being bypassed. So pay attention because I will explain how to prevent each one of these. So on my desktop, I got two folders. We got the admin bypass folder over here. I'll be explaining, showing all the techniques and the downloads folder. So the first technique that I will explain and show you how to prevent, I like to call it the bypass technique. So. First, I will show you manually how it's done, and then I'll show you a script that does it automatically. So over here, we got Steam Setup and WinRAR, and if we try to run it, it gives us the UAC prompt. Now, on my computer, I'm an admin, so for me, it just has yes, no, but if you're a standard user, it will ask you for the admin password. Either way, it's going to be the same thing. And if you don't have the password, you will not be able to get past this prompt. You'll just be able to click no. Here, let me make it a bit bigger. If you see this shield icon right here, that means this program is specifically set to run as an administrator in its code, but it's not hard coded within the code. So you can actually modify it and have it run as your current user. So the privilege isn't high to the point where you need some kind of admin access. Now, let me show you how it's done. We're gonna open up CMD, click here, type cmd.exe. So. Now we got CMD open and it's literally just two commands. First, we actually have to change the variable that has the execution privilege. And we can literally change this variable within command prompt. So change it, we go set underscore underscore compat underscore layer equals. And now we're setting it as run as invoker. So we, as the person executing it, as the user executing it, we are the invoker. And when we're setting this to run as invoker, we allow it to run without needing any sort of admin privilege. Click enter and we're going to go start steam setup.exe. And boom, no UAC prompt, no nothing. Steam setup just starts up. And same thing with Rinrar. A few moments later, no nothing. But if we run it just like this, it gives us a prompt. Now, the script that automates it, if we look at the code, we see that it just starts command prompt, but it's minimized and it executes the commands and then just exits right away. Boring. And this part looks confusing, but all it means is that it starts whatever you drag over it because that's the percent one variable. So this is made really easily because all you have to do is just drag it over. So instead of running it, having the account control, boom, and you go straight into it. Now, one little thing is that this is kind of limited because if the program actually needs some sort of admin access to do some sort of thing, that will not be bypassed. If, for example, for Steam setup to download a specific game that has like an anti-cheat that needs to be installed with admin privileges, you won't be able to install it. So this only fully works for programs where admin access isn't actually needed, but it's just required for security purposes. How do you prevent this attack from happening? The simplest and most effective solution is simply disabling command prompt through group policy editor. So you want to go windows R GP edit dot MSC enter. And here you go. This is the group policy editor and we can use this to add certain restrictions. So you want to head over to user configuration, administrative templates, and then system. Just click on system. Don't open it up. And over here, you will see a bunch of policies in the bottom right here. You will see prevent access to the command prompt. You want to double click on this. You want to click on enable. So you enable the policy that prevents access to the command prompt and then click apply. And then you want to run GP update slash force in an admin command prompt to ensure the changes have been made. And now the use of command prompt and batch files will be blocked. So it will not be possible to do this attack. Now, the next method is definitely more intrusive and I call it the brute force method. So how the brute force method works, the attacker brute forces some kind of admin account until the password is found and then uses that password to get through the UAC prompt. So over here, I actually have a script that automates this. But how this works is that it uses the netuse command to locally brute force the SMB service 
all it does is try to actually get the password of the user so you can interact with it locally. So typically there's some sort of password list like this one. And what the brute forcer program does is try every single password on this list for a certain account until the right password is found. So let me demonstrate that for you. I'm going to run the script and over here we see the list of commands. We can list users, brute force and exit. So we're going to list users. And over here, we see every single user on the system. So looking at the status, we see some of them are degraded, which means that that account is disabled. You can't access it, but we do see the ones that are enabled. And we also see the SID. So something that I'll tell you about the SID, if you see 500, that means that that user has admin access. The administrator account, also the SID ends with 500. So I'm going to choose to brute force this one as the attacker for demonstrational purposes only. And then I'm going to click two to brute force. I'm going to type administrator and click enter and the password list passlist.txt and bang here we go so this one's pretty quick finds the password and then this password can be used by the attacker to then literally download whatever they want and bypass the uac prompt now to prevent this one again we're going to be using the group policy editor you know i love it except this time instead of disabling some kind of command prompt we're going to create an account lockout policy. And this prevents any sort of brute force. This basically means that after a certain amount of attempts to log into that account, the account will be locked for a certain period of time. So the brute force cannot happen. Again, we're going to go Windows R, gpedit.msc. Now this time, we're going to be looking at the computer configuration. We're going to go down to Windows settings, then security settings, then account policies and then account lockout policy. First of all, we see that the allow administrator account lockout is disabled. We want to enable it. Now over here, we see by default, it's set to 10 invalid logon attempts until it is locked out. We can change this to whatever we want. We can literally set this to one, two, three. Three is pretty safe because if the password was wrong after three attempts, pff, hey, either, either. Uh oh, retard alert any brute force attack very early on. Hit apply here too. And then we see the account lockout duration. So this is how long the account is locked out for. Now, honestly, I would set this to at least five minutes, 10 minutes if you want to be really safe. And here we go. Now we're set. Again, you want to run GP update slash force to update the policy. And now with our new policy in place, if we try to run the brute force, now we see that the brute force is running and the password actually already got attempted. And that's because we're actually getting an error because the account is now locked, but the brute force doesn't really handle that stuff. So we just see it is still running. And from the attacker's point of view, no matter what they do, they will not get into your account now because the account is locked. So even though we went over the password, account is locked, doesn't matter. Now, the last method that I'm gonna be showing you is actually the trick the sneakiest and it is what i've actually personally seen this method has the highest success rate for the attackers so this one is pretty dangerous because it works very effectively i call this one the fake uac method so the little uac window that you see pop up this thing this is the uac prompt what fake uac does is that it creates a fake one and i'll show you exactly what it does in a second so we see main.vbs, repair.dll, kill.bat. I will explain what all of this does in a sec, but first I will demonstrate it. So let's run main.vbs and here we go. Looks totally legit. Do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? And we see it's run DLL32, so it's not command prompt or like any sort of Steam setup. It's looks like some official file, right? And how this attack works, it's actually more of a social engineering attack. So this means that this isn't just purely technical. This goes outside of the computer into the real world. So typically, if this is done in the workplace, the employee is showing this to the boss. If it's done in a school, for example, the student is showing this to the teacher and saying, oh, I don't know what's happening. This UAC prompt is here. And when I try to say no, it always comes back. You just keep on showing this. And since the student or the employee or the hacker, the bad actor, since they don't know the password, they literally can't get rid of this prompt. It's going to keep popping up. And then the administrator will try. Nothing will work. Task manager clicking no, clicking X. Nothing will get rid of this thing. So they have no other option but to put in the password and click yes. And then the prompt finally goes away. Must have been some kind of Windows update or something, right? Huh? If the attacker goes into their taskbar, they now see a newly created CMD instance. A minimized admin shell was created. From here, the attacker can do anything. He can change passwords. He can start any program. For example, to change the admin password, it's literally as simple as typing net user administrator. And then whatever you type afterwards 
will be set as the new administrator password. Now, the limitation to this is that it does take some kind of social engineering, but this has been very effective for attackers. So it's important to educate yourself about this attack. And in a second, I will teach you how to prevent it. But first, I'll explain exactly how the script works. So you as a system administrator have a full understand of how this process is happening. So there's a few files here. We have main.vbs, which is what we run. And all this does is create an infinite loop where run dll 32 2.exe and run as administrator and we use run dll 32.exe which we see there we use this to run repair.dll repair.dll is the file right here this is a dll coded in c and all it does is open a cmd window minimized all it does if you run this as a normal user you're going to get a normal cmd but if this is ran with admin privileges, an admin shell will be created. And that is exactly the point of this, because this run as command gives the UAC prompt. And But it doesn't give the UAC prompt for downloading something or having some kind of update. It uses it for repair.dll. And now the next line of code just waits for two seconds. And this can be customized to set to one second, so it loops faster. But this is just here to make sure that the script isn't running too fast and to make it look more legit. And then it checks if command prompt is running. So if command prompt is running, then it'll exit. If command prompt is not running, then it'll keep looping. So that's why another thing is that all CMD windows have to be closed for this to work. If I just have CMD open in the background, this attack will not work because it'll detect that CMD is running and it won't loop. And now kill.bat, this can be used to actually stop the whole process. So if we try this and, you know, we decide to abort it for some reason, we just have to go run kill.bat and the loop will stop. So now just knowing exactly how this attack works already helps you a ton because now you can detect if it's happening, right? If someone comes up to you and it's just the UAC loop going over and over and it's not for an official program, you can kind of tell that something is up. If you really want to prevent this tomfoolery, we got to hit up group policy again. Because using the group policy editor, we can disable VBS scripts completely. So this means main.vbs will not even be able to run. So we're going to open group policy again. And just like how to prevent the first method, we want to go to the same location. So user configuration, administrative templates, system, except instead of preventing access to command prompt, we're going to open up don't run specified Windows applications. Now, by default, this will be set to not configured and you want to enable it. And then you want to show the list of disallowed applications. Over here, you want to add W script and C script because these are the applications that let VBS scripts run in the first place. So you want to put these two in, just go here, type them in, click OK, apply, and there you go. And once you have updated the policy, VBS scripts will not be able to execute. Now, again, this video was only for educational purposes only, and I really tried my best to help you find ways to prevent all of these methods completely. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something new. If you like this video, you will definitely like my other videos. So click on my channel, watch the other ones. Thanks for watching till the end. I will see you next video. Peace.